Hey guys, let's tackle one of the eternal questions in vintage electronics, and that is how to reaffix loose tube bases and loose plate and grid caps. What am I talking about? I'm talking about these caps on top. This one's barely hanging on by the wire, and loose tube bases when the adhesive between bake light base and glass has failed and it becomes loose. I've seen this question asked so many times in the online forums, on Facebook, etc. And I've seen many, many, many answers. Super glue, Elmer's glue, wood glue, two-part epoxy, flowable silicone, which I have promoted in the past, and all manner of other glues and adhesives. This is Permatex Flowable Windshield and Glass Sealant. I've talked about this many times in the past. I generally have used it to affix the bases to picture tubes. I liked it for that application because there's a little bit of give to it. Especially for picture tubes where there's a large surface area and they get pretty hot next to the base. My concern was if you use something like two-part epoxy that's super hard when it's running and the glass is getting really hot and it's expanding a little bit, you want something with a little bit of give or exactly the same coefficient of expansion so everything expands together. I've seen it happen, not often, but I've seen it happen where a crack happens because the adhesive they used had no give and the glass tries to expand and it cracks because it can't. So, so I really don't recommend two-part epoxy. Now the others, especially super glue, can't handle hot, high heat very well. So there's a 6BG6 horizontal output tube. If you use super glue on this, it's going to fail very quickly. This tube gets really hot. Super glue doesn't like heat. So let's try something else. I saw somebody propose this recently and I've never, I'd never heard of it. I've never tried it. So that's what we're going to do. This is liquid glass also known as sodium silicate. The person who suggested it says it's very similar to what they used originally, which is actually a rather complex mix of material with everything from, I think, marble flour to um, resins and, and all sorts of stuff. That was back in the early days when they didn't have very good adhesives and Bakelite was kind of a new thing. Uh, Luckily, they found something they could handle high heat, bond to glass, bond to Bakelite, and, and hold up over time fairly well. I suspect they tinkered with it over time because I find more early tubes with issues than newer tubes. So, this I got off of Amazon. It's, it's readily available. It's inexpensive. It's used for all sorts of hobby things. It is sort of viscous. It's a little milky, but when this dries, it is clear, which is why they call it liquid glass. And it has similar properties to glass. And apparently it adheres well to glass, but also it can take really high heat, like a couple thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So product uses high temperature adhesive, additive to refractory, additive to cement, concrete sealer, automotive repair, fire protection, pottery glaze. Yeah, you can... Like if you got a hole in your catalytic converter or, or some exhaust pipe, you can repair it with this. You can mix this to other materials to uh, make them sticky and uh, handle high temps. So the idea is to get some on a small brush, toothpick, whatever, and feed it down in there. Now, if all the old material is gone, um, I don't know how well this would work because if you just say like down in here is that old uh, mixture that um, it's not just a thin adhesive it actually is never broken up a base before there's there's a bunch of material down in here that's good you want that to be there because this is very thin if all we had was this bake light cylinder in the glass and we put this in the only seal is just going to be a thin bead around the top, which I don't know would hold up too well over time. So we have a loose space here. What I'm going to do is just get some on the brush and wick it down in there. I'm not sure what the set time is on this, but uh, it's 
got to be better than the than the silicone, which takes probably a good 24 hours to completely cure. This stuff's pretty inexpensive. I don't know. This container was probably less than 10 bucks, and you can get it um, in much larger quantities, and the, the cost goes down considerably per ounce the more you get. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit to get it down in there. So I laid a bead all around. It's fairly thin. It should work its way down in there. I'm going to put a little bit more in. There's a damper tube. They run pretty hot. Off the excess. It's a little messy. I don't know what the solvent is for this if you do need to clean it up to they list anything uh, you can rinse with water that's if you get it on your skin or <laughs> don't eat it don't drink it yeah they don't list any uh, specific solvents so it's to be determined well, it's plate cap. So there is actually a wire coming up through the top of the glass. It goes into this cap and then it's soldered on with a blob up top. Again, ideally there's some old material. And yeah, I can see there is still the old bonding agent still down in there. So I'm just going to lay a thin bead down in there. If the, clip paint, <laughs> if the cap had completely broken off, and it didn't have that residual material. I'm not quite sure what would be the best approach. You're going to want to get some kind of filler in there, not just rely on this. All right, that's a pretty healthy glob. Push this down. I think a clamp's going to be in order for this guy. There we go. Don't apply too much pressure, of course, don't want to break it. Now let's do the 6 BG6. We'll grab another clamp. This one's not quite as loose. I think I can still wick some in there. If you really want to get some in there, if you heat this up, and we see that's a little bit grayish on top, that uh, you can heat that up and pull the cap off completely. It is just soldered on. But I'd rather not if I don't have to. Interesting stuff. So I just brushed a little on there, a little wiggle. I don't think it's going to be an issue if I have a little bit of excess material on the glass itself, but I'll, I'll wipe off some of the excess. Alright, let's clamp it up. And, uh, do a little research and try to find actual setup time for you guys so we don't have to just guess about it. Carefully clamp it. If this works out well, this is cool because this stuff is super easy to apply, inexpensive, readily available, and a lot less messy, sticky, and gooey than this stuff. I just applied it. I bought a whole bunch of just cheapo brushes online somewhere. I'm just going to throw it away. I imagine if we knew what the solvent was, you could clean it off and reuse the brush. All I know is it says on here if you get it on your skin to use plenty of water to get it off. I think it's fairly benign stuff seal back on. I imagine it'll dry out if exposed to air. 
<laughs> sealed for your protection. <laughs> I think it's more like sealed so the product doesn't go bad from being exposed to air. Well, it seems that 30 minutes is the setup time. It's been about that long. This is on there very solidly. It does clean up with water if you get to it before it sets up. Let's check out this cap. That's on there solidly. And finally, this guy, which was the loosest of the group. Uh, nope. That did not bond. Huh. I'm wondering if that's a case of there was no, no, I don't know. I was going to say there's no, um, maybe there wasn't uh, the residual material in there and it doesn't bond so well, just metal to glass. Huh. Because, boy, this one is uh, really on there. Well, I don't know what happened with this. Let's, uh, let's give it another try. What do we got to lose? But the other two tubes uh, seem to really work out well. I thought I put plenty on here, but uh, let's just go for it and I'll Put a bunch inside and I'll let this sit a bit longer because I imagine if you use a lot of this, it takes the more you use, the longer it would take to set up, I would think. Alright, I'm not gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the excess on there, so I'm squirted out. Oh let it sit about an hour, we'll come back and see see where we're at. These clamps work out nicely because they have an X pattern on them and you can fit that cap right into it. I want to put it vertical too. Maybe that was a mistake I made laying it on its side. Lying it on its side because all you know, the solvent might run to one side. It's thin. It's uh, I don't know quite how to describe the consistency. It's thinner than say Elmer's glue. But it's not quite as thin as water. All right, let's give this a Check here. Seems pretty hardened on top. And yeah, that is on there now. How solidly? So I'm, I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on it. Now I wouldn't put a, need a pair of pliers on it and crank it or really crank hard on the plate cap or grid cap. But yeah, that's that's on there. So time will tell. I will be using this technique from now on as we get into more projects and once we actually get some tubes running in a set for a while we can see how well it holds up in particular. I'll use this and uh, I use 6BG6 as most of the sets I work on so for sure we can find out sooner than later how well this holds up. If any of you have used sodium silicate before. I'd be uh, interested in hearing what your experience is with it. So far it seems to work well, but again until we apply heat we won't know how well this can hold up to it. But I mean, that, that is one of the, the selling points of this is it's supposed to handle high heat very very well and it seems to bond to glass and bake light and metal well enough. So there we go.